Okay, so we are going to be going over geometric constraints uh, in Inventor. Uh, we should have this file open. Uh, it should be located on the Google Classroom website. Please open it up and follow along with me as I'm going through these different geometric constraints. So that way you can have a little bit of uh, physical experience with it. Now, once I do open up this file, I want to get into the sketch that I made. To do that, I'm going to be clicking on the sketch one on the left hand side. Uh, and then I am now in my 2D sketch mode. What I'm going to start off doing uh, is each of these windows represents a different tool. Uh, some of them I've combined a tool, like for this first one, I've combined both collinear and coincide, um, coincident uh, constraints all together. So collinear and co uh, coincident constraints are uh, gonna be on this upper left button right here. A coincident constraint will be if you want a point to be either touching a line. Uh, so you can see I can have this point now going along where this line would be fitting. You can also do it a point with another point. And that'll get the two points be touching each other so they're locked into place. And we're just going to go back a little bit. All right. Um, now, our next constraint that I want to go over is collinear. Collinear is going to be where, where one line shares the same line. So, not only is it going to be parallel, but the lines will be on that same linear plane. So that's uh, coincident and collinear. The next one over that I'm going to go over is uh, concentric. Uh, so concentric is going to be where you have uh, a circle or an arc and it shares the same point. So you can see I can do this with both a circle and an arc and as I move the center point all the other pieces will move as well well I can always move that arc so that's what you would use for circles and arcs parallel constraints parallel constraints are going to be where two lines are going to be parallel to each other all right uh, so as long as you click on both those lines now whenever I move this line and this line it's going to be parallel so you can see it's gonna the lines will always be parallel to each other Perpendicular. Perpendicular is where you are going to want two different lines being 90 degrees from each other. So you can just do that perpendicular, click one line and another line. It looks like a little T, uh, but it has a little, it, that's what perpendicular symbol looks like in here. Um, so now if I actually measure this out, See right there, it is 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to that other line. Horizontal constraint. Horizontal constraint uh, is the next one over here. And this one, uh, you're able to click on, say, a line and just make that whole line horizontal. The other thing you can do is click on a single point and then click on another point 
and then that one point is going to be horizontal constrained to that other one. You can see that there's a little dotted line on uh, Inventor that it gives you uh, an example of where that horizontal constraint is going to be fitting. Vertical constraint. Vertical constraint will allow you to make lines just straight up and down and again it has that ability to do a vertical constraint just to a single point, just like horizontal. Tangent. Uh, tangent is going to be when you have uh, a circle and you want that circle to be touching a couple of lines. So I'm going to lock these lines into place really quickly. Tangent will allow you to click the circle and click the line, click the circle, click the line. And so that now the circle is going to be touching these lines. You can also click on the other line. And now it's fully locked into place. So the circle is touching this line, that line, and this bottom line. Smooth. Uh, smooth is going to be for if you are creating a spline, smooth will allow you to make a nice smooth transition from one arc to another arc. Uh, so instead of adding a whole bunch of different uh, constraints into there, uh, dimensional constraints into there, you can just do that smooth constraint. Don't really use that one too often though. Uh, symmetric constraint. Uh, this one, again, uh, don't really use it all that often, but it's a nice way to uh, get a line to just be going straight through the center of those other lines. Click, click, click. Oops. Oh, I accidentally fixed the constraint here. Let me get rid of some of these guys. Click, click, and click. And now you can see it's centered between these two lines. If I shrunk down this angle at all, it would show me that it always goes right in between there. And then last but not least, we have equal. I have this line being equal to this line. It just makes them the same size. So as I make the one line bigger, it just lock it. The other line will get bigger as well. I can do the same thing with any sort of circle or an arc as well. I can have the two be equal in size. And then as I make